Welcome everybody, I'm Alexander Linz, head of content of watchadvisor.com and today I'm welcoming you from Zurich. With me is Wilhelm Schmidt, the CEO of A Lange und Söhnen. Welcome Wilhelm. Hi Alexander. Grüezi, as we say in Switzerland. <laughs> you have yeah, to... We could speak in German at least. <laughs> yeah, Swiss German would be, a, would, would be a guess. I struggle with this, but I think the common language is German, so we yeah, could, yeah. but we, we could, stick yeah. to English. We say Grüezi. Um, why is Wilhelm in Zurich? Um, Wilhelm is opening um, his first boutique, La Alange und Söhne. No, not, it's not your boutique, it's the boutique of Alange und Söhne. Um, Wilhelm, why did it take you so long? to come to Switzerland with a proper monobrand boutique. Have you been scared or not prepared? <laughs> or, or, do you, or, or did you want to bring the shock as, as late as... as well, why uh, did it, it, it's, you know, I, I believe sometimes you just have to wait for the right constellation. Okay. Um, and, and maybe that can take a while. Okay. And maybe it took a long while in the case of Alang und Söhne and its first sort of standalone uh, point of sale in Switzerland. But um, we, we very early decided it had to be Zurich because of the German speaking part of, of, of Switzerland, which yeah. by nature is probably a little closer to us. Also, if you go back to the history, uh, Blumlein and so on and so forth. Um, so it had to be Zurich. Um, it had to be the right partner, it had to be the right location. And if you know Zurich a little bit, you know that um, locations like the one we're sitting in here, yes, they don't they don't pop up now and then. Actually, no, they, triple 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 A location. Yes. We are so that's right on Bahnhofstraße. And, and and in hindsight, you know, it's it's always been our philosophy to to wait for the right moment and not push it and go for second best. We so you weren't scared. I was to come. no no. It was of course it takes some balls to come to Zurich. Um, and it's uh, it's it's financially uh, Zurich is quite a stretch, uh, so you had to prepare the market for it. But I think we here we could have had it earlier, but again we as we don't take shortcuts with our watches, mm -hmm. we were also mm -hmm. not prepared to accept shortcuts uh, by choosing a wrong location just to be there. So you know everything eventually turned out to be right in time, mm -hmm. and, and here we are, and it's it's beautiful. I'm curious, the watches you sell here in Switzerland, of course you have been distributed by, other, by, by, by retailers mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Do you have an idea how many locals buy Alange und Söhne wearing then in Switzerland and made in Germany on their wrist? Yeah, um, it's only guesswork because as you said rightfully, it's sold through partners and, and, and they don't share all their data with us logically. I do believe that um, if you look into Zurich, I'd like to believe that the majority of the watches will actually go on Swiss wrists. Mm -hmm. um, I do think as well if you go to Lucerne or Interlaken, a lot of watches will end up on you know, all nationalities yes, wrists. Probably, yeah. um, so it's fair to say in Zurich we focus very much on local customers. Okay, so you are convinced that uh, the watches are not only sold to foreigners in Switzerland? I'm pretty sure not, not in Zurich. So little, little, yeah. uh, little submarines yeah. wearing... <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, you know, I think, f first of all, don't forget, uh, if there is one market which is highly educated it's regarding it's fine yeah. uh, watchmaking, then it's Switzerland. Um, and the collector is not determined by collecting watches that come uh, out of the nationality that he has. It's actually, he's specialized in fine watchmaking and if you specialize in fine watchmaking, I think we have a couple of things to offer that may be of interest. For yeah, you. it's a good guess uh, or a good, uh, uh, um, let's say a good, you said something very interesting. Um, I know that you have been traveling a lot the last yeah. months. Yeah. Um, one of your big visions or big uh, uh, goals for the future is how to convince a next generation yeah. How can how to convince a younger generation to value the yeah. things you do, others in your level do. Yeah. So you have been traveling and you have been also in, in contact with many young people. Yeah. So what is that feedback? What can you tell us about? It's very interesting mm -hmm. because at a certain point, I think we old mm -hmm. chaps buying those watches, we are dying. And then who, who's, who's next? Well, I hope there's still a lot of life left in the two of us. But, yeah, of uh, course. But, but, but I agree. Um, Look, it's, it, it all starts, if you don't know, you will never admire. If you've not ex been exposed to something, um, it is just not relevant for you. Mm -hmm. um, 
and many things we do, they are almost the contradiction of what that particular generation grew up with. You know, click and you have it the next day in the post. That's something which we can't do because on, you know, on, on, on purpose we are not available, at least not instantaneously. Um, and, and to understand why that's the case, you need to dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. um, what I've learned is that what we have to offer is of interest, but the way we have to communicate, we have to expose it, is very different with that generation than with the generation that I represent, or even uh, the one which is 20 years younger than me. So we have to communicate differently, um, we have to use a different language, uh, we have to learn to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Because if you've not been exposed to any mechanical watches, and the majority of this generation has not been... Uh, not necessarily. Uh, no, they, they, you know, they grew up with electric, with digital, uh, with products that have a longevity of about a year or two. Um, so they, they grow up with something very different. So we're not even on, in, on, their, on their template. You know, we, we do offer something which has no relevance in their universe. Now we have to find inroads into that universe to share at least with them what we do. It's mm -hmm. still their decision whether what we do is of importance or interest for them and mm -hmm. if they then eventually are prepared to spend a lot of money for it. Mm -hmm. But that's you know the, the, the very, very end. Today we have to lay down the foundation to ensure that we stay relevant. Mm -hmm. And we are irrelevant if we are not known or what we do is not understood. But it's also us, the parents, that are in charge a little bit to, to communicate about yes. these, let's say, anachronistic instruments yes. we old chaps have on our wrists yeah. and to tell this young generation, okay, uh, yes. you can read time yeah, by either from your phone, smartphone, or yeah. by, from yeah. your... Uh, I, I don't even say watch. It's a consumer electronic. Yes. It's not a watch. Well, it's a, it's it, a utility, really, yeah. isn't it? And um, you could wear, you could, you, could, you could read the time from these instruments or either from something we like and admire. Yes. And then it's just this link you have to make. And, it's, I think and that's it's, the important stuff, you know. How do you, how do you make it relevant? Yeah. Um, well, people understand that somebody that spent his life in perfectioning uh, the polishing of a little part, is that something which they understand, that somebody can really work his entire life in polishing, beveling, putting decoration on, engraving, mm -hmm. and, and what it means for them, for the community, and for you that very suddenly you have a piece of art around mm -hmm. your wrist. That's not a time mm -hmm. instrument. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gives you the time, but it's really mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit of art that you put around mm -hmm. your wrist. Have you uh, been uh, instructing uh, your personnel in the boutiques around the world to be very open-minded towards a younger generation? Because a lot of them might uh, walk in front of such a boutique, but they don't dare going in because they are scared. They, they say, okay, oh no, this is not my world. Uh, maybe I'm not dressed properly. I'm, Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just not, the, I, I shouldn't be in there. Is there a certain way you could ease up this, this first step to get there and not be scared of touching a watch that probably costs 100,000? I don't oh. think they will enter the shop because their life is not walking up and down that street. Okay. You know, that's where already the problem starts okay. or the challenge starts. I'm too optimistic. <laughs> no, they don't walk here. My son, you know, the, the, the good news is I'm the father of a 19-year-old son and a 20-year old uh, daughter they don't do shopping. they don't go any on, on, on they any. don't do shopping they, they go I have online. a daughter she's 23 she adores to <laughs> do some window shopping on such streets it, 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 I'm not saying they won't do it forever what I'm okay. saying is um, we have to prepare them for what they see here in the digital world okay you know because that's yeah, yeah, where learn they, them first and that's also where they gain the confidence if they're yeah. familiar with it because they've seen it on the internet they've talked to their peers they talked to um, about the material, then they don't, they don't, uh, they are not scared to, to go into a shop because they are prepared. They could see um, a YouTube video. But absolutely, you know, things like that. Yeah. But, but that's the way they communicate. Yeah. And, and, and again, we need to learn they don't but think. And they don't if, if young people get into yes. a boutique, they're welcome. Of course, yes. 
they don't need to buy necessarily. Look, they can ask questions. I think they the majority touch. of the people that go in here for the first time, they don't buy immediately because these are expensive uh, watches. So um, yeah, but I know you know I know what is in in their head. It, it's that kind of they don't want they don't risk or they don't want to make that first step. Alexander, in. it's a very European view. If you go to China or to America, you will see a lot of people that come in flip flops and jeans and shorts and polos. Um, and and they, they made a lot more money than you and I ever did in our life. And they are 25 year old or 30 year old. So I think it's a very European uh, mm -hmm. belief to link age um, and taste and um, um, available assets um, to you enter the shop in America or in, in Asia, that's already very different. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. gladly it's a global thing that we, we <coughs> live in. So um, I believe that the majority of the boutique people know that you must not judge somebody mm -hmm. um, just because uh, he, he comes casual into mm -hmm. a shop, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily re reflect his purchasing power. So, talking about purchasing power, yes. I have a special <laughs> purchase <laughs> object <laughs> that could be purchased. Could yeah, be. well, uh, it's it's uh, to celebrate the 25th yes. anniversary. You are off the first watches. Huh? People always misunderstand that because it took us four years to develop them. That's true. So, what we celebrate on the 24th, you were there, the 24th of October, is um, the first four. Ah, Lange and Söhne watches, yeah. um, and of course the one that literally, basically it's untouched, the design is untouched, the movement yeah. we changed once is the Lange one, and that's why we decided to come up with um, an addition, usually every 24th of the month, there's an exception this time, because we opened the boutique yesterday, which is the 10th, and we thought it's such a nice thing to open a boutique and launch a watch that we put it together. So it's the first time that this watch is shown in Switzerland? Definitely. Uh, it's a watch you presented at the SIH? No. No, you did not? No. no. So it's if people it's think really I've seen it, not you possible. Can't. You no, can't? No, no, so it's no. A watch Unless they were here yesterday evening. Okay. Other than that, nobody could have seen it so before. So the, the watch wasn't shown before? <laughs> no. Okay, good. No. Uh, and it's an exclusive piece. Is it limited? Yes, it's 25 only yeah. because it's a 25th anniversary. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> you know, like the first Langer ones, um, all the indices are printed like in the very, very first ones. Because later on, I think from '96 onwards, um, the indices were usually done out of the same material than the case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a blueprint, which is also rather unusual, and, and, and the blue steel hands we also don't use too often. And on the, on the back, uh, which is now, I'm sure, too difficult to put uh, on the camera. We will film it anyway um, in, in a close-up. The, so. the balance cock actually is um, done in a different design. It will represent the 25, or the 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. but you know, 25, with a different uh, engraving. And we blued the ground of the um, um, engraving and polished it. So it's all blue, mm -hmm. um, not the surface, of course. I see. We will film it. Very nice. And you see the 25th? Yes. The big date, 25th. You know the story about the 25th and why we always represent the 25th. Uh, because many people don't know. Um, so maybe it's an interesting little story. Go, Go for it. So we launched the 24th of October 1994. In those days, believe it or not, there was no internet. So everything that we know today didn't exist then. Um, so logically, the first appearance of this watch in public would have been the later. next day on yeah. the newspaper. And Bloomland wanted to be accurate. Yes. So if we see the launch on the 20th, we'll be at the 25th. So that's why we launched on the 24th, but had all watches on the 25th. To, yes, to, have a, to have an accurate reflection on the newspaper the next day. And that's, you know, it's a little thing in, in, in the corporate memory of the brand. Yeah. So if you go around here, you will see all the watches oh. are adjusted to the 25th. The old watches oh. are adjusted to the 25th. The old watches oh. are adjusted to the 25th. The old watches oh. are adjusted to the 25th. 25th. 25th, yeah. So if you ever little wondered, story. If you ever wondered you why know the watches of Lange and Turner <laughs> always show the 25th, now. William just explained us this. William, thank you very much. Uh, I, wish you, I wish you really uh, all the best for Zurich. Um, we'll do our best as always. Yes, uh, show the Swiss. 
how, <laughs> how good your watches are. I think there's no doubt about it, but still, maybe someone will pass by, walk in and say, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Absolutely. Could More than welcome. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Uh, thank thank, thank you. you very much for your little emotional um, approach uh, towards a younger generation. I think it's very necessary and I'm, 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 I'm happy also with my work to, to help a little bit or thank to you go so forward much, in the sense of educating or talking about watches. Absolutely. And, and uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Good seeing Guys, you. Uh, if you like what we're doing, as always, please don't, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our videos and don't forget to hit that little bell to get notifications for the next videos and what other stuff goes on. Bye-bye from Zurich. Grüezi. Bye-bye. Grüezi. Grüezi. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.